Okay, well, welcome everyone to second the second of three panel discussions hosted by Global Affairs Canada, EDC, and MSTA Canada. Theme of these sessions is the mining industry transformed, how Canada is shifting industry norms. Today's session is called Drilling Differently. It is now my pleasure to introduce our moderator for today, Ann Thompson. Ann is the producer and co-host of the Discovery to Recovery podcast and recent author of the Innovation in Mineral Exploration published by PDAC. She has 35 years experience working in and consulting to the mineral exploration industry, including fieldwork and applied mineralogy. Anne's company, PetroScience Consultants, now focuses on exploration, technology, and innovation in the mining industry. And last fall, Anne was named one of Global 100 Inspirational Women in Mining. So congratulations on that, Anne. So without further ado, I will hand the platform over to Anne. Hi, Anne. Pleased to be here today with everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, I think it's going to be a great panel. But first, I'd like to just acknowledge that, that I'm coming, visiting you and hosting you from Vancouver, British Columbia, which is also the unceded traditional and ancestral territory of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and, and uh, Musqueam First Nations. So I just like you to consider yourselves where you are on, on Indigenous land and celebrate the peoples that, that whose land you, you share. I'd also like to, to let you know that about our panelists today. So we have, as I said, three um, to talk about drilling, which is, as we all know, fundamental to our industry from the very first exploration through to mine closure. So without drilling, we don't do have our business. And so it'll be really interesting to, to hear today from our panelists about the, the things they're doing and the innovations that they're creating and, and, and practicing in the field right now. So we have uh, Dave Jones from Drillco. He's his business development officer. We have an Kevin Slumco from Major Drilling. And we also have Alan Cram from Novamera. And I'm going to introduce each of them individually as we get through the, the session so you get to know more about each of them as they, they, they present. So the very first presenter we have for you is, is David Jones. And David has 25 years of experience in financing and managing mining, uh, mining exploration and contract drilling service companies in Canada. He has extensive experience in obtaining startup growth and expansion capital for private and public companies which of course was a, a very critical part of the of the Drill Co story, which is a, a new uh, a new company and a very exciting venture. So I'm going to turn it over to David to to let us tell us about Drill Co. David, thank you very much, Anne. Really appreciate that. I'm just jumping on to uh, get my uh, presentation geared up. There we are. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank EDC and Global Affairs Canada for the opportunity to speak today at PDAC 2020. I will jump right into my presentation. I'm excited to share our story with you, and I look forward to some uh, good discussion once we're completed. So Drillco uh, has created the Clean Tech Modular Drilling System. Our team involves Sylvain Brisson, who is our president and lead system designer with over 30 years experience. And I take care of business development, and we have a full a full time staff of 16 people. Under today's agenda, we're going to go through some information on the clean tech modular drilling system that's been created, the clean tech benefits, financial savings, technical advantages, operational efficiencies, and I'll close with a couple of awards and customer reviews in a very short video. So Drillco has made a clean tech modular drilling system. We are modernizing the drilling industry, and we do see this as a disruptive technology. We have created the industry's first clean tech modular system that is one drilling system capable of performing work on the three standard applications being underground, surface skid, and in heliportable configuration. Our hydraulic power pack and the operator control panel is standard on all systems. We have designed this drill specifically for drillers, mechanics, and owners. From a driller's perspective, they're looking for maximum performance and power. They want to be able to get their meterage in and keep, uh, keep, keep the client happy. From a mechanic's perspective, these drills don't break down on the shop floor. 
They normally have challenges when they're on, when they're in the mountains or out in the desert or in remote locations. We have designed our system to be clean and spacious, and each major component is assembled on, on a four bolt system. When challenges arrive, even the drillers themselves are able to uh, replace the components and have the system back up and running in very short time. Finally, from an owner's perspective, drillers normally push the machines beyond their capabilities to ensure they get the daily meterage required. We have a password protected uh, screen that has preset parameters for all of the drilling functions. When a driller puts the pedal to the metal and pushes a little too hard, our computer system only allows the system to go up to the highest level where it can operate safely at high performance without having any damage to the equipment. Our customers are located uh, right now in the Yukon, in, in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, Ontario, and Quebec. We have several drills operating in Mexico, and we have a private client operating in Mali, West Africa. I'd like to talk about the clean tech benefits of our new innovative drill. The picture on the right is of, uh, is of our system operating for ITL drilling in, uh, for Garibaldi Resources. Their, uh, their flagship project is in the Golden Triangle in northwestern British Columbia. Our super efficient system, hydraulic system, offers no power loss from the drill collar right to end of hole. This is important as holes get deeper, we still get maximum drill performance and productivity. There is over a 30% savings in electrical power and diesel fuel consumption. For diesel fuel alone, this provides an annual savings of 50,000 to 100,000 liters per drill compared to our competitors, depending on which make and model they are. We use 75% less hydraulic oil and 75% fewer hydraulic hoses and connections compared to our competitors. Again, this drastically reduces the, uh, the possibility of spills, ground contamination, and then cleanup. We've also eliminated all hoses from, the power pack to, uh, from our power pack system to the control panel. We conserve water as we're the only system that uses an air-cooled system which, with brushless variable speed fans. We use seven magnetic filtration systems with no discarded filters. Our filtration system is able to remove particles down to submicron size. And finally, during rework, there's reduced hydraulic hoses to the landfill. I'd like you to take note of the picture in the upper right, uh, right hand corner. That's our hydraulic tank, which, stand, which has 90 liter capacity. We've made a drill that offers ultimate, uh, ultimate performance, but we have to save our clients money. And we do this by offering a lower cost of acquisition, a lower cost of operation, and a lower cost of maintenance. There's a 30 to 60% reduction in capital costs due to the modular configuration of our drill. If you purchase the drill in surface configuration and you'd like to change it to underground, a small configuration kit needs to be purchased and, uh, and it can be used for the other, uh, for the other application. Again, fuel savings of over 30%. This has been proven to be true based on all of our drills and operation. This is between thirty-five and $70,000 in annual diesel fuel savings calculated at 70 cents per liter. We have reduced parts in inventory. It's a clean and easy system to fix and very little maintenance cost. We also have simplified user training. When one of your drill operators is trained on a drill co system, they're able to operate underground, on surface, or in fly location with no, with no additional training. Some of the technical advantages. Again, based on our super efficient hydraulic system, we actually have increased net power to the drill head. We use advanced data logging systems, and we offer unmatched 5,000 uh, PSI in our drilling mode, which again helps with our high performance. We only use premium parts. This increases the life of major components and it keeps the drill spinning. That's what everyone wants. Our advanced magnetic filtration system, uh, two of them are strategically located within the power pack system that they can be checked uh, before every 12 hour shift. 
And if any contamination is found on the magnetic stick, it, it shows where early detection and diagnosis could be for where you want to check the machine before you continue to operate. We also are interlock safety system ready. We had the opportunity to introduce this drill to a multinational drilling company based out of Sudbury, Ontario, who has some of the highest safety standards in the industry, and we were able to pass the test. Our most common question asked when people see us at, uh, at the trade show floor or come to our fabrication shop is they see the small size of our unit and they're concerned with drilling capacity. We always say, don't be fooled by our small size. As you can see, the depth range is very competitive with all, with, with, with all competitors. We currently have an ultra deep system that uses the same power pack system that is now rated to 3000 meters. If I can draw your attention to the lower left-hand corner, that is Globe Explorer, one of our clients from Mexico using the track drill that you saw earlier in the presentation. With that exact hole, they, they were able to complete a dry hole of 2,400 meters. It's a new record in Mexico. Globe Explorer believe, and the geologist on site felt that they were out of mineralization, so they stopped the hole. Upon returning uh, the assays, they're still in mineralization and their plans are to re-enter the hole and go deeper. I'm pleased to report that the drill coal system still had lots of power. Under operational efficiency, um, first like to point out the pictures are a truck mounted multi-purpose unit that we built for a private client in Mali, West Africa. This drill is capable of doing both reverse circulation drilling as well as diamond core. As you can see, the cornerstone uh, of this drill is the drill coal hydraulic power pack, which again is the same for all of our units. The picture on the right shows that unit in full operation in Mali. Again, we've, we've used both advanced and clean technology to make a high-tech system that is super easy to learn, easy to operate and maintain. Our touchscreen preset parameters for each drilling function make it very simple for even inexperienced drillers to have success. The advanced data logging is used for drilling transparency and for driller training. The rod handler that we've used, uh, we've incorporated our, inv our advanced valve technology. This is important for accuracy, precision, smooth operation, and repeatability when you're moving the rods into place. We also have user choice of motor group and power output. Uh, what I mean by this is there are some existing um, drilling contractors who are brand specific to motor groups, uh, including Volvo, Cater Caterpillar, um, Mercedes, or others. We have the ability to take whatever motor group you choose to do and, and, uh, and use it with our power pack system. Bilco didn't make it where we are alone. Over the past six years, I'd like to show recognition towards the Federal Government of Canada, uh, FEDNOR, the National Research Council uh, Industrial Research Assistance Program, and the provincial government under NOHFC. We have successfully completed 13 innovative and R&D projects with them. I'd also like to take note of the, of the, center, uh, the center logo that says NOBO which stands for the Northern Ontario Business Awards. Uh, Drillco was awarded the most innovative company in 2019. A couple of quick customer reviews. The first comes from Steph McGuinness, who's the Vice President of ITL Drilling. It quotes, these drills have exceeded our expectations at every turn, reduced fuel consumption, significant power and depth capabilities, data logging capabilities, and a hydraulic turntable, allowing us to drill multiple holes from a single setup. The drill coal rigs are an exceptional piece of equipment. I'd like to give a tiny side note that they bought their first drill three years ago. They currently have five in their fleet and they've recently ordered three additional. Uh, they are operating their company exclusively with drill coal equipment and have told us that they have been awarded contracts as a direct result of being able to offer the most clean tech system in the industry. The second customer review is from Jeremy Hansen, who's the Vice President of Exploration at Garibaldi. This was for ITL, but it comments on our drills. ITL's professional team of drillers, helpers, and foremen 
along with their state-of-the-art drills, were instrumental in completing our most successful drill campaign to date in some of the most challenging terrain possible. So we appreciate those wonderful comments. Thank you very much for joining us. I've got my contact information there. I look forward to further discussion. But to close, I would like to share a 40-second video with you to summarize my presentation and show you how much fun we have working at Drillco. Thanks again. They love the physical appearance. I mean, it looks like a rock star drill and they went, we can't wait. But once they actually used it and felt the horsepower and the energy it had, they said, this thing's a Ferrari. Bilco has the most innovative and advanced modular drilling system on the market today. I thought this was the ultimate chance to address the need in the industry. We've been able to create a highly functioning, efficient system that is environmentally responsible. This is safer, this is more efficient, and I really felt that you could do it all at once. One piece of one could address all the needs. We feel this is the best system available on the market today. Thank you, Dave. That was great. We really appreciate that presentation and, and great video to get us all going this morning. Um, I'd like to move on to, to our next presentation, but I'd just a reminder to all the participants, there is a question and answer button at the bottom of your screen. So please use it. Um, and as we're going along with the presentations, any questions you come to mind, please feel free to, to put them in the Q&A box. And, and we'll be coming back to them in the in the discussion later in the in the panel. So next on the on the uh, on the schedule is uh, Kevin Slemko, and I'm really pleased to introduce him now. Kevin is corporate business development manager at Major Drilling International. He started in mining 30 years ago, literally in mining, and has extensive experience from mining and drill operation to understanding the business technology interface and assessing the emerging needs of, of their clients. So with that, I'd like to, to turn it over to Kevin. Uh, thank you, Anne. Just pulling up my presentation. Yeah, I'd like to thank the MSTA Canada, Global Affairs Canada, and Export Development Canada for hosting this panel for Drilling Differently. As Anne mentioned, I've been in the mining and drilling industry uh, going over 30 years, and I grew up in a small mining town in northwestern Ontario called Pickle Lake. Major Drilling is one of the biggest exploration drilling companies and have operations across the globe, as you can see on our map. We have a very diverse services list that we offer for both surface and underground. Even with the challenges of COVID-19, we broke a few records in 2020. We completed a Canadian record depth hole of 3,467 meters for a Cisco at the Windfall Project. And in Mongolia, we drilled a record 2,000 meter PQ core hole, and our crews just beat that record last week at a depth of 2,021.3 meters. All great accomplishments. For our sustainability and growth, we have been focusing on these 10 areas, safety, trust, people, planet, our diversified services, innovative solutions, our specialized drilling, examples that you just saw on the past slides, equipment and inventory, our partnerships, and our financial strength. We're gonna focus on our innovative solutions. Major Drilling strategically invested in itself, creating an innovation department tasked with analyzing current challenges, road mapping the future of drilling, and developing products that will ensure our clients receive the best in market service. The Trailblazer Innovation Group was created in 2017, led by our innovation manager, Ian Wilson. The Major Drilling Trailblazer vision is to offer unique solutions that help our employees have a better work experience and drive value for our clients. The first innovation we'll cover is our, our drill data analytics system. We recently teamed up with Symboticware, a company that provides hardware and software solutions for gathering data, to upgrade our current 1.0 drill data analytics to our new 2.0 version. Pictured is the rig's dashboard display when fitted with our drill data analytics system. This will improve efficiencies with our experienced drillers 
and improve and reduce training time responsibly. The algorithms will learn from the drilling and will show in green the most efficient values to be at while operating. A series of transmitters placed strategically around the drill's hydraulic and water systems, with additional sensors capturing linear motion and rotation are installed to reference other matrix such as hole depth and RPM. Capturing this raw data from critical areas of the drill while operating, algorithms then analyze PSI, flow rates, and speed metrics into meaningful data, like rod torque, weight on bit, penetration rate, water pressure and consumption, both going in and coming out, rock hardness, production trends, the output of data is almost endless. We can provide dashboards for project overview, rock characteristics, and hydrology. And these are the dashboards on display right now. You can have an overview of the entire project, a specific hole, or choose a depth or timeline point during one of the holes. So the results and benefits are increasing drilling efficiencies by outlining drilling techniques and cycle matrix, optimize maintenance opportunities and minimize mechanical issues, aid customers in identifying key changes in drilling conditions, record of the hole from collar to completion, daily visibility to production information and project progression, strengthening partnership through data sharing and transparency, strengthening that trust. Our own IT department developed and implemented our next innovation called the Client Portal. So what is the Client Portal? It provides access to a monthly overview and daily production reports in order to review daily cost and production details. On the top portion, clients can select a specific project and have an overview of all drills performance or dial down to a specific drill end date, providing a breakdown of cost, productivity, and downtime. On the calendar view, used for major drilling and client approval processes, detailing production and shift reports, activities recorded on that shift, list of consumed materials, equipment used, supervisor and crew names. Clients are seeing these details as soon as the shift reports are uploaded to our cloud, building that transparency and trust. Our next innovation is our MTB mobile app, which is what our crews use to upload the shift reports. This also was developed by our IT department, which does not require a Wi-Fi to fill out. It has a responsive design, integrates with our client portal that I just mentioned, with prompt time and billing entries. For the next innovation, we looked at how we could speed up the drill cycle from drilling, to lowering the wire line, to retrieving the core tube and core, pumping down the empty tube and latch assembly, back to drill it. So introducing the fast descent latch assembly. We partnered up with a leading tooling manufacturer to develop and test a new fast descent latch assembly. Delivery of the core tube from collar to bottom of the hole is twice as fast than conventional latch assemblies. It uses 50% less water, reduces non-drilling time. Now, this is especially significant on deep hole drilling. Currently, we're using assemblies for N and H size core and we'll be testing our P prototype in the coming months. Our next innovation is our hands-free rod handling. We have over 250 rigs with some type of manufacturer's rod handling out of our current 590 rig fleet. We chose to team up with an engineering and hydraulics company out of New Brunswick to design and build our new Trailblazer Safe Grip rod handling system. The rod handler automatically adjusts to the diameter of the pipe and it brings the rod from the ground level to the rod presenter, which will then bring the rod in line with the rod string and screw into place. This is a horizontal ground stacking rod handler. It allows for a diverse site layout, rod stack three meters wide and three or six meter lengths anywhere 220 degrees around the drill, as you can see in the yellow area. It allows for rod pickup on on-level ground, capable of N, H, and P rods, barrel, tube, and casing. Adaptable to multiple rig models, adaptable to both chuck drive and top drive models with a semi-automated system. 
Our first prototype was installed and tested on one of our DE710 rigs, which we have 65 globally, but can be adaptable to multiple rig models. Semi-automatic system can safely bring the drill rod from ground level to align with the mast by a push of the button by the operator. We have also incorporated a no-go zone with either proximity sensors or an e-stop system as seen by the red lines. The exclusion zone includes a safety factor larger than the widest potential swing radius. And that is it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Kevin. That was a great tour, and I'm sure there's some more tidbits to come out later as well. I'm sure you've got more than that up your sleeve. Um, that was great. So we'll move on, and, and our third panelist, is I'm pleased to introduce is Alan Cram. Alan is VP Innovation at Novamera, based in Newfoundland. And he has over 30 years in mining as well, with 12 of them as general manager of the Point Ruth operation for Anaconda Mining before becoming VP Innovation and then transitioning to his current role at Novamera. So we're pleased to, to hear what, what they're working on because it's pretty cool. Alan? Okay, thanks, Anne. Uh, I'm pleased to share uh, some of our technology we're developing with the audience today. And I certainly like to thank the organizers for this opportunity. Uh, what I'm about to share is truly drilling differently. So living close to and working in the mine industry in Newfoundland has certainly provided me a great insight into the challenges that mining companies have uh, and when they deal with trying to bring resources into production. Using my time as an example with Anaconda, we were constantly trying to evaluate a nearby deposit called Romeo and Juliet as possible feed for the mill. Uh, it was discovered in the mid-80s. It had uh, in excess of 40,000 ounces. It was next door to the mill, yet we couldn't find no economic means to extract the gold that was, uh, that was located at this deposit. Uh, the underground method would require intense development of, of access ramps, shafts, uh, cross cuts. Open pit in, in this example would have resulted in a 20 to one strip ratio. So incredible amounts of waste and a small amount of ore. We needed certainly a new way to mine. And this is, the, uh, this is actually the Romeo and Juliet vein that's exposed on the surface. Uh, we did a bulk sample back about six years ago, and to the right is that vein in section. So you can see it's a, it's a fairly well-developed vein, but it's a single vein, fairly steeply dipping, uh, and you can imagine trying to put a pit shell around there. The inspiration for what we were doing really came from, um, from an observation in the mine. This is actually pre-shear holes in the open pit, and you can see the amount of deviation. Uh, these holes are, are extending from surface down to six meters. They are offset from collar to the end of the hole, something in the order of three meters on average. And this really, this got to, you really got to think, this is actual steel pipe. Okay, so that's, this is, uh, this is actually pre-shear holes, I'm not sure where I lost you to, uh, from Anaconda's open pit that actually uh, deviates somewhere in the order of two or three meters. This is, this is solid steel drill rods that have turned this much. And that was really the inspiration for our technology. The, the, our, our work focused really on the InBit tool. This is a tool to, that we could, we could focus on identifying the, uh, the uh, hanging wall, foot wall of the mineralization itself. This is our core technology, or the, we call the brains of the operation. We matched that up with a larger hole opening um, cutter that follows that pathway created by the near-bit imaging tool. And then the two of them together gives us our new surgical mining method. Uh, using reverse circulation, we can actually bring the core chips back to surface without the need for extensive underground development. Nova Mirror's focus has been the below the ground technology, uh, what some industry people call the smart tools. Uh, these two images show on the left the actual uh, in-bit uh, tool that does the imaging, uh, identifying the hanging wall, foot wall contact, 
as it's being deployed by conventional uh, drilling technology, either core or, or, uh, or later on we'll be doing some RC work. And then the second pass on the right is actually the pilot hole with the large uh, cutter bit that brings the, the starts the, the process of cutting the, uh, the zone, uh, adding the, the water, which is created uh, you know, by the static pressure from the surface and returning cuttings to the surface where the uh, solids and, and solutions are separated, allowing the material to be transported to the plant. So in our case, we're not looking to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we're looking to focus at what actually happens below the ground. Uh, we'll use existing and conventional technology for uh, for the pilot hole. So it'll be a conventional diamond drill, fitted with directional tools, uh, followed by a pile top drill. And there are several manufacturers of uh, this type of equipment. There's actually two on the call here now uh, that make this stuff. And uh, our focus is really still what happens below the ground. This we consider to be transformational change. We'll, uh, we'll reduce the footprint. Uh, we'll reduce emissions somewhere in the order of 50%. Uh, we'll reuse water, recirculate it. Um, we'll have significantly lower upfront costs, much quicker development to get to a, an operating um, situation. Uh, our operating costs, we're targeting $125 to $200 a ton, and that's all in cost. Uh, there's, there's no extensive pre-development, as you see in a lot of uh, conventional underground and open pit mines. And there's significantly reduced risk. Um, there's, there's no sunken cost. When the project is finished, the capital involved in the drilling uh, will be moved on to the to the next project. We're right now working on finalizing our prototype. Uh, we anticipate that we'll have a trial customer unit ready um, by June 21, um, basically another few months, and then when our full generation one unit will be uh, commercially available uh, on December uh, 2022. I certainly like again to thank everybody for the opportunity to share this. I'm looking forward to uh, to bringing our technology to, um, throughout Canada and around the world, and uh, we see great opportunities ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. That was great. Um, and as your management team, I'm, we had a small technical glitch there, but I think I think we've. We, we got a good picture of, of what Novamera is all about right now. So to go to back to, to our, I think we go back to our room with all of our panelists. Um, we do have some questions coming in and I encourage everyone to uh, continue to add to the, to the Q&A. We're gonna start off with a, a few general things just to, to get the conversation going. Um, and, and really all these, these Groups are all of you are working on very innovative concepts. Um, innovation is a big word that not many people really understand, but we know that it's adding value to you know a technology or process and and creating value. And and it takes some out of the box thinking sometimes. So I'm really interested to know um, in the work that you three have been doing what. What were the biggest drivers? What what really made you step out and try try these things? And, and maybe what was the most challenging obstacle? So I think I'll go to Kevin first. Um, you can pick one of your multiple things that you've been working on, <laughs> and and just give us just a a short insight into into the process that went behind this work. All right. Well, our biggest drivers is safety, of course, but uh, increasing efficiencies as well. For example, when we created our innovation group. Um, our VP at the time asked our innovation manager, Ian, to simply make the latch assembly go faster. So that was his first task, and he uh, teamed up with a global tooling company, and they came up with that fast descent latch assembly. Um, I also mentioned that we had 250 rigs with rod handling capabilities, um, but most of them are limited to the models they come with. So we had to look at uh, other options because we have 590 rigs in our fleet, and we needed a, a more versatile option, hence the uh, um, the safe grip rod handler. 
Uh, the biggest challenges um, that we see is how much time and energy it actually takes to get an innovation from concept to the field. Uh, but we are getting better at it. Um, but it's a list of innovations that I presented with you today. Right. And the, and the concepts, are they coming from, from drillers, from clients, just wherever it filters through? It, uh, kind of both, because, uh, yeah. like I said, it was our VP who was a driller, told yeah. our uh, innovation manager, make, make this go faster to speed up the drill cycle. So, And the same with rod handling. We, we have so many rigs, you know, uh, just our innovation group put their heads together and, uh, all right, maybe right. we need to create something ourselves. Yeah, yeah, interesting. How about for you, Dave? Uh, for, for, our our Sil <laughs> for, uh, uh, for, for us, Sylvain Brisson, who's our president and lead rig designer, he's got 30 years of operational experience for some of the largest drilling contractors across Canada. And over his career, he saw a couple of major challenges in the industry that he wanted to change. One was that contractors often needed to purchase different drilling systems for the different applications, one system for underground, another system for surface work, and then a third system for uh, for for uh, being ultralight or or, or fly-in work. Um, the second thing was he he didn't see a lot of change in the hydraulic system of the drills over a period of about 20 years. So he wanted to do something that would create more efficiency, higher production, and maintain safety. And that's where we created this modular modular system that's able to operate in all three applications. And we've tried to combine both clean tech and advanced technology to create the best performance at a lower operating cost. Uh, for us, our, our major obstacles, um, like Kevin spoke, are, are, are financing and time. Uh, we've oftentimes, within our organization, we talk about innovation excitement. It's that eureka moment where we say, let's make this. And we have the idea that there's actually a quick fix. But the time it takes to design and model and engineer and prototype and test and finally bring something to commercialization is far longer and far more expensive than we've ever realized. Yeah. Yeah, I well, in the work that I did for PDAC last year, you know, it was on average five to six years at least. And that was just for some small technology, not necessarily a whole drill or anything like that. So three to seven years is common. Um, we're not like the software groups that can churn out something new in two months, right? This work right. that has to go in. Yeah. Alan, what, do you, what about the Nova Mara story? That's a completely different. Yeah, so I guess I, uh, you know, for me, I was on the other side of this as a general manager, and uh, you know, as a general manager, you're constantly worried about the resource that you have uh, available to, for the mill, and um, so we had numerous deposits surrounding our mine, some within our control and some outside, that that we tried to look at every possible mining method uh, to make it economic, and nothing worked. You know, and I just looked at, you know, even, even you know, standard production drilling in the pit. You know, we could we could drill 150 kgs a minute with a regular production drill. And I said, you know, this is a great, maybe there's a there's an opportunity there. So for me, it was driven by the need for ore. And, you know, despite the, you know, extensive exploration work, there was no new, new deposits being discovered. And, you know, and then in our, our appearance on PDAC in, in, in the uh, disrupt mining a number of years ago, uh, really highlight that we weren't alone, and there were many opportunities like this. And uh, now we're, you know, we're, we're reaching uh, potential customers uh, globally. But there wasn't a technology available for us, so that so we sort of had to make that. Made that by sourcing. How how did you source that technology? Well, we looked. Uh, you know, we were lucky in that we we uh, had partnered with Memorial University, who um, you know were, they weren't a mining. It wasn't a mining school. Yeah. They were they were rich in oil and gas technology, so we really got into the oil and gas sector. Uh, you know, using that technology, bringing it into mining. I think if we had continued to work with the mining university, we would have probably stayed with more conventional mining approach. Uh, but I'm, I'm really glad we we did what we we've done here. So it's it's oil and gas technology. we're going to try and and get to some of them so that that you you can 
you can answer. Um, so, so one of the, the big ones for, for all of you is, is a question about speed of rotation in the drilling. So for, like, more, I guess, actually for, for exploration and mine, not for, for Alan, you might want to, you, your speed's going to control how much ore you get back. But the, the question is the, the speed of rotation and to comply with daily quota leading to rock damage and geotechnical logging maybe maybe um, impacted by that. So would you say that speeding of the drilling drilling cycle is possible by changing other parameters? So can you for drilling operators are speeding up the rotation in order to comply with getting a quota and and so how can you limit the damage from that? Is that a question? Sure. Sorry, and, uh, Kevin. Kevin, 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 maybe should go to that one. <laughs> uh, thanks, Anne. I'm not quite sure speeding up the rotation is is the answer all the time. So we there is parameters of uh, the best penetration rate, and that's all dependent on the ground we're drilling on and everything else. So um, uh, that's why we keep our parameters, keep the training up, that the guys understand that you know, pushing rotation and everything uh, there's limits to it you're not you're actually slowing things down when you increase up uh, to certain levels yeah that makes sense actually yeah. you got something to add Dave yeah I completely agree with what Kevin has said there's so many factors involved with with speeding up the production uh, of, of getting that drill hole done uh, first of all we it has to be done safely but on our systems, and, and Kevin was showing with his data logging and analytics, that there are, there are parameters in which all of the features of the drill should operate to offer optimum performance. And that is obviously what the, uh, what the, drilling, system that, the, the drilling systems that Major is using, um, as, as well as ours. So it's not just a matter of speed to get down. The other challenge, when, when a driller pushes a little too far in terms of one of the features to try to get more meterage, is you end up with hole deviation and the hole goes off target and especially on deeper holes if you're off by you know one or two degrees uh, you know shallow in the hole by the time that hole is supposed to be hitting target that deviation is has increased and oftentimes you miss your target and you spent an awful lot of money putting a deep hole in play without the right results yeah. okay fair enough um, moving to some other quick questions, I think uh, somebody was wanting to know from from Novamera a couple of questions for you, Alan. Do you um, the range? So I, I assume this is this is width of your hole. Do you have a do you have a, a the question is what is the planned range of drilling? Are they expecting 30 centimeters to five meters? And and also, are you using water? Or can it be air? Air is it air or water? Yeah. So the, yeah. So our our initial focus really targeted veins that were up to two meters thick, because my experience that typically mineralization is thicker than two meters. There are there are more options available, more conventional mining methods. So our initial target was two meters. It's not limited to two meters. Uh, the type of drilling we're looking at doing with the uh, with the large diameter drilling had been successfully done up to five and six meters. Uh, so our but our target initially for our MVP is a two meter uh, diameter hole targeting a two meter thick vein. As for water, we're, the reason we're using water in the hole is is that it's a process of reverse circulation. So as the hole is being drilled, uh, the large hole opening unit, it's the hole is constantly filled with water, so that creates a static pressure at the bit, and by injecting air behind the uh, the bit. Uh, through uh, we get the upward action of the air pulling the uh, the solids back up the drill string. So it's a very cheap means to move material. Basically, we're we're, we're using the uh, the air in conjunction with the static uh, water pressure at the bit, and and the water helps stabilize the borehole as well. The because that that entire hole is filled with water. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um. Oh, they're just kind of flying in these. <laughs> so the, going back to um, to you, Kevin, just briefly, the the data I, is that you're collecting. So a couple of questions related to that. Do you have a central control room concept? 
And then how are you transferring the data? Um, is it via satellite? Uh, okay, so the information gets downloaded to a, a tablet, so the drillers have, and then as soon as, and depending where they're at, as soon as they get back to the, the hotel or wherever they're staying at, then that gets hooked up to the Wi-Fi, then goes to our cloud, and that's where we're able to share it um, uh, to our clients. Right, right. Okay, excellent. Um, and uh, and uh, another sort of operational question. So thinking bigger about sustainability, a few people have been wanting to know about energy use. And so I think that goes back to Dave to answer in terms of are you looking at other renewable energy sources to run this, this Ferrari that you've got? Uh, we, we have looked at other renewable sources, particularly uh, battery packs in light of there's a couple of mines uh, in North America and one in Ontario that's gone completely electric. Um, we, we don't believe that that's the direction in which we are going. Uh, based on the carbon footprint that we actually look at when you look at battery power versus electric on site or diesel, um, the, the new battery packs don't offer um, uh, a significant advantage. <clears throat> uh, secondly, because our, our hydraulic system, which is the magic within our system, um, combines both that clean technology and advanced technology, we're already offering a 30% savings in either diesel fuel or electric energy. And that's creating significant uh, benefit to the environment <clears throat> and financial savings. So I think we're going to continue in the direction we are with uh, with diesel and electric for the time being. Yeah, excellent. So do you see all three of you? Do you see this this all these innovations you've been working on changing the workforce of the future? Do you think it's going to make a difference to how how other people engage with drilling and get get jobs? Maybe we'll go go to Alan. Yeah, well, I, I, I certainly believe that, uh, you know, with the automation, I mean, everybody's using the, you know, the rod, you know, whether you're using a rod handling system, in our case, we're going to be using InBit tools. It's going to be fully, you know, eventually be fully automated and, you know, it'll be wide open to, to, uh, people, um, you know, regardless of, of, uh, physical fitness, uh, and, and, and gender is certainly yeah. great opportunities going forward. Yeah. Kevin? Presumably on the same theme. <laughs> yes, exactly. We're we're definitely seeing the change in the workforce, and at Major Drilling, our goal is to have our workforce um, reflect the communities communities that we uh, work in. So whether that being hiring locally or partnering with local groups, uh, kind of like in Canada with our Aboriginal and First Nation uh, partnerships. Uh, with technology, we see increasing um, safety and efficiencies, but we're also as Alan mentioned, that we're uh, giving more opportunity for a broader uh, workforce group for both men and women. So we're hoping that will help us with some of the recruiting challenges we're currently seeing in, in the industry. Yeah, and part of the challenge will be to get out that message out there as to what, what a modern drill is and, and what an operation looks like. Yeah, Dave, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, you know, and I certainly agree with exactly what both Alan and Kevin are talking about. Uh, something else I'll add to, the, add to that is the mining and exploration industries have a cyclical pattern to them. And that results in a high turnover of experienced people within the industry during the boom and bust times. Um, we're seeing a younger generation entering the industry, and they're incredibly comfortable with technology. And that has been a real advantage as all of these technologies we're speaking of today have 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 a younger feel to them in in using uh, in, in using the electronics, using computerized app dashboards, collecting the data, and uh, being able to transmit it. Having this younger workforce, uh, it, I, I think it's uh, going to be very beneficial. Um, we too have also seen uh, First Nations and women uh, become much more active in the drilling and exploration areas, and having technology reduce the physical component um, of, of the old style of drilling has certainly helped open the drilling world up to be more uh, more inclusive. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's good news for everybody, good news for the whole industry. Uh, and looking forward, I guess, the, what, what do you see as the greatest opportunity for, for your, your company, your technology, and, and 
what do you what do you think the future i think we might just roll that into beyond 2021 what what do you see coming on the horizon for for each of you and so we can we can go back to kevin first we'll switch the order up here <laughs> um for us, the greatest opportunity we see is, is keep evolving our innovations to increase our safety efficiencies and uh, and uh, strengthening that partnership we have with our customers. Uh, for looking ahead, as we continue to develop uh, new technologies and improve current ones, um, I just see the uh, unlimited opportunities for our, our industry and our workforce. Um, now, we cannot be tethered by conventional thinking. We get to keep asking ourselves, why not? Uh, I think that's a Jeff Bezos quote. Um, but yeah. I do see us drilling deeper and uh, mining in more unconventional ways. So I, I feel technology, innovative technology will help get us there. So I see exciting times ahead of us, just what David and Alan have been showing us as well. So Yeah, excellent. All right, we'll go to David. Back to David, then to Alan. <laughs> yes, thank you. I, again, I have to echo the comments of, of, of Kevin that we're continuing to evolve, continuing to move forward. Uh, I don't think any of these three technologies are, or companies are happy with where they are. We want to continue to push the envelope in terms of safety, higher production, and inclusiveness. Uh, for us, we've spent the past six years um, developing our technology and our clean tech modular drill. So we now want to spend the next bit of time uh, showcasing the benefits and the financial savings and roll out full commercialization to both mines and, uh, and drilling contractors in North America and around the world. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, Alan, you get the last word okay. before we wrap up. <laughs> Yeah, well, I would say, you know, one of the, one of the things that is certainly uh, in our future is more demand for, for the minerals that we currently produce. And they're getting harder to find. They're getting more complicated. They're in more sensitive areas. So, uh, you know, a, a method to mine these veins, the, even the veins that we know right now uh, around the world, is going to be a tremendous opportunity and really, uh, really help the, um, the, the, the cycle of uh, production going forward. And uh, so I'm, we're looking forward to being a big part of that. Yeah, excellent. Um, thank you, all three of you. It's been an interesting discussion. I think we're, we're very close to the end of our session. I just think that um, there's so much here and there's so much more to be done in what view, people view as a very traditional kind of, uh, I think we have, we have a view of mining that's very sort of set in our heads, but the view of drilling is probably even worse. You know, it's and and you're doing a great job, all all three companies, to actually alter that view and see where we can where we can start and where we can change things from the bottom up. And it's really exciting, really great to see. I think uh, we probably need to say thank you to each of you. And, and remind everybody that they can come back and revisit this, I believe, as a recording. You'll see it circulated in a few days. And if you have any questions, I hope that they can be filtered through Ryan at MSTA. I don't actually, if that's a good question, but I think they can be. And I'm sure you can be found on your social media platforms if anybody has further follow-ups for, for any of the companies. And I encourage anyone to do that. Um, yeah, we also I have also, a virtual booth that you can come visit us. Yeah, to. virtual booth. Has everybody got a virtual booth at PDAC? Yes? Yes? Okay. All us. right. <laughs> go <laughs> sign into PDAC and go visit you at the booth. All right. That's a good tip. <laughs> um, I also want to thank, thank you to MSDA, Export Canada, and Global Affairs for providing the, the platform. And I wish everybody a really awesome day and 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 the rest of the of the week thank you sounds good thanks Anne. thank you thank you very much appreciate being here